wanted to speak about Hangry. What Hangry is, why it happens, and what we can do about it. My name is Dr. McLaughlin from Sharon Map Wellness. All right, so some of us, when we get hungry, we also get angry. Why that is, we're gonna cover that in this video. Basically, it has to do with low blood sugar. Blood sugar drops and there's changes in our hormones. Those hormones include serotonin. We know that serotonin is important for mood stabilization. It also helps with appetite. But as far as mood stabilization, when it goes down, serotonin goes down, we feel upset, we get angry. So that's one of the reasons. Cortisol levels. Cortisol levels will actually go up when we're hungry. Body's a little stressed. We want food and, and we're not eating. So because of that, we get a little angry as well. We get stressed out and we may be short of temper, more prone to developing fits of anger. Other things too, one of the GI hormones such as ghrelin. Ghrelin is a hormone that tells our bodies that we need to eat more. It's a hunger hormone. So that increases. And then other shifts that happen too is Dopamine is another hormone that decreases. We know that dopamine, I've spoken about it before, it's one of those feel-good hormones. We know that people that have different metabolic syndromes, they're more prone to developing hangry, and those include adrenals, or adrenals make cortisol, pancreatic problems, people with kidney problems, they're more, out, more likely to develop problems feeling hangry, all right? And then there's external forces as well. Say, for instance, you're on a diet, some crazy diet that asks you to restrict calories to like a thousand calories a day. It's too stressful for your body. And that's why most of us, we can't sustain a diet like that, not for too many days or weeks. It's just too much for our body. So what happens because of that is that um, when we restrict our calories, cortisol levels go up, we're stressed, as I mentioned. So try to avoid those diets that ask you to restrict calories that you know that much. If you're doing a fasting, I talk about that in another video, an intermittent fasting, it's a little bit different. You are consuming calories, but it's usually not a thousand calories a day either. Also, when we're restricting calories, we may not get enough carbohydrates. One of those carbohydrates is sugar, and I've spoken about this before. Unfortunately, some of us crave sugar so much. It's in a lot of different foods and our bodies get used to it, it's super concentrated. And sugar, when we have it, it helps increase dopamine secretion. And that's why one of the things that happen is that when we're uh, very stressed, we'll crave sugar. And that's basically why that happens. Now, restricting carbohydrates too is another reason why this happens, such as like the keto diet. We need carbohydrates in our body. We need fats, we need carbohydrates, we need protein. We don't need it in the form of sugar, personally. I try to avoid that. But think about all the good vegetables, green leafy vegetables, tons of vegetables that grow above the ground are carbohydrates. Our body needs them. There's many different reasons to eat vegetables, such as phytonutrients, and I can go on and on, lots of phytochemicals in it. But the bottom line is they're full of antioxidants and we should be eating them. And we really should, I don't think we should be restricting our diet from carbohydrates. But when we do, such as the keto diet, it stresses our body out, all right? And it causes those changes in hormones. There's actually been reports of depression, confusion on the keto diet. So just be careful with that. Any diet that you try, start to speak to your doctor about, but go slow. That's what I tell my patients, just go slow with it. And then there's emotional components as well. And I can give a good example. My daughter's 17. Lately, we've been fighting like cats and dogs. And we'll only fight for like 10 minutes, but my head is pounding, I have like this headache. And so we know that even though physically it doesn't take a lot to fight, mentally we know that that really can consume a lot of calories. Not even so much calories, just we just feel mentally exhausted afterwards, right? So think about that. When you've been in a fight with someone, later you're just mentally exhausted. So the same thing happens when uh, we think about, like when we're basically resisting urges to eat, such as if you are on a diet, we spend more time thinking about food probably than, than when we're not dieting. The reason for that is because we can't have it. And again, it stresses our body or, or you know we're focused on the food that we can't have. And that unfortunately will also shift some of our hormones, all right? And then it's nutrient deficiencies as well, such as omega-3. If you're deficient in omega-3, let's talk a little about omega-3s first of all. What are they? They come in different forms. There's ALA, and that comes from the plants, usually like walnuts and soybeans and flax seeds. And then there's other types of omega-3s that come in the fish. You know, and also 
um, eggs, pasteurized eggs, as well as some grass-fed beef. But deficiencies in omega-3, that too can cause us to be hangry. These deficiencies in chromium can cause um, like basically cravings with sugar. So I'm all about eating a well-balanced meal, and these are some of the reasons why. I hear these or see these crazy crazy diets that restrict you from doing this, from doing that. I'm all about, you know, eating a whole balanced diet. I have a wellness guide if you're interested. You can find it at Sharon Mac Wellness. And I also have a course. It's on mindset, using our mindset to overcome, you know, to help us with losing weight. So you can also take a look there at Sharon Mac Wellness. But these are some of the reasons why, basically why hangry happens, right? So what is it? We know what it is, why it happens, well, another reason too, actually, which I didn't cover, too much exercise. Now, exercise is great. We're supposed to be doing at least 20 minutes a day, and so about 150 minutes a week, and then two sessions of strength training to build up our muscle, because as we get older, our muscle depletes, you know, decreases, it's called sarcopenia, but we want to maintain that muscle mass, make sure that we're strong and that we we're, uh, it will decrease our fall rate and just help with overall bone strength as well. Lots of different reasons to exercise, but those are just a couple. So when we're exercising too much, yes, we're supposed to exercise, but when we do too much, like say 60 minutes, um, we really decrease, decrease a lot of our water and, we, and our nutrients as well. And then what happens is out of those glucose stores, they then get, uh, they, we then start using up our glycogen stores. Because of that, we then start um, using our muscle mass. So it's too much in our body. Again, too much exercise, too much stress. Yes, it's good for us in smaller amounts, but when you do too much, it stresses our body, changes the hormones again, and then we're more prone to developing hangry. I know some people that are dieting, they say that when they diet, when they exercise too much too, they consume more calories than if they never dieted, they never exercised in the first place. And I've seen that, so just be careful of that. I think one of the best things that you can probably do is interval training. It's been shown to help boost metabolism and help boost our mood as well. So just, you know, about 20 minutes, up to 30 minutes. But when you start doing 60 minutes or two hours worth of exercise, especially if you're trying to lose weight, it's really hard to exercise and, and lose weight. I think we should exercise for overall wellness because it's good for our body. But again, like anything else, if you overdo it, it leads to our, um, some problems. Intermittent fasting is another thing that you know we can do. If you just jump right into fasting, it again stresses our body. So one of the things I recommend going forward, just if you're going to make adjustments to your lifestyle, go slow. Those slow little steps, if you can consider them little steps, are probably better off long-term. Why? Because it allows our body to adjust. We get used to it. Get used to it over several days or several weeks. And then as time goes on, we make more adjustments. Probably better than doing cold turkey where it stresses our body and there's been reports of like hair loss and just go, you know, so we'll make sure that whatever you're doing with changes, it's just going slow. So as far as hangry, if you're one of those people that get hangry a lot, right? You feel very hung, hungry and you get angry, perhaps small meals. Now in general, I don't really push small meals at all, but if your experience of those problems it's fine. The reason why I don't push small meals, multiple meals for most of us, is that it doesn't allow our body to rest. The whole idea about intermittent fasting is that we, our bodies get to rest, and there are reports to show that inflammation will go down if we give our body bodies periods of time where we're not eating at all. And then definitely junk food, right? The more sugar you do, the more hungry you get. Two hours later, you're hungry again, and it causes that vicious cycle. So be careful with that. You want to make sure that you're eating, you know, nutrient dense foods, you're having well balanced meals, and that you're just taking care of yourself. The other factors that come into play here too have to do with sleeping. Are you sleeping enough? Because that has to do with stress. Are you hydrating yourself enough? That has to do with stress. And then as far as snacks go, you can do snacks. Uh, fruit is a great way to get some sugar into us because it has fiber, but it, it's not all just full of sugars and carbs. It's not all full of sugar, right? You're getting some antioxidants in there. You're getting fiber. If you definitely want uh, chocolate, then consider doing dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, again, is has antioxidants in it. 
typically not as much sugar, so you can get your chocolate fix if you need it, but it's a it's healthier way to go. Some people, some diets actually say, you know, you should have about 20 grams of chocolate every single day, dark chocolate that is, because of the antioxidant sets that's in it, and it supposedly um, helps stabilize the blood pressure, uh, blood sugar, sorry about that. Anyway, so make sure you're getting plenty of sleep, definitely exercise, but don't overdo it, stay hydrated, and try to eat a well-balanced meal. All right, so this is Hangry in a nutshell. If you have any other questions, reach out to me. I want to hear you know, any topics that you're interested, as long as they have to do with wellness, I'll try to cover them. And again, if you look at my website at Sharon Mac Wellness, you can see that um, I have a free guide, all right, as far as wellness goes, and also my course on mindset. All right, guys, I'll see you on another video. Bye-bye.